Are you able to see the pile that is down here? It's no joke. I, I, have, I have not given up yet. Whoa, okay. Oh my God, another visual feast. <laughs> the best thing on the Wagamama menu is... Hello, my name is Tom and today I'm gonna to be eating everything on the menu at Wagamama and figuring out which is the best so you don't have to. This is a big one. Wagamama is incredibly popular in the UK. It has 190 restaurants worldwide and 130 of those restaurants are in the UK alone. It was started in Bloomsbury in 1992 and ever since then it's just been growing and growing and growing. This is probably gonna be the biggest version of one of these videos I've ever done. I'm feeling slightly apprehensive. Let's go and get the food. Hi. I wasn't kidding when I said it was a lot of food. In order to get this up to the office, we actually had to load this into a cart and take it through the streets and up in an elevator. But we have it and um, the only thing left to do is to um, set it all out. So let's do that. Okay, so as you're probably able to tell, um, we've had to reset the um, camera angle a bit because there's literally so much food on this table that I have to sit on a higher chair. I am gonna write down the thing which I think is gonna be best. And then once we've tried them all, we'll reveal it and see if anything's changed. No peeking, please. Thank you. Okay. We'll keep that away under lock and key. I'm gonna start with the starters. The chili squid. Chili squid comes with this like chili sauce and the squid itself, so let's go for that. When they make the squid, they cut it in like crisscrosses and then when it, when it cooks, it like curls up like that. So my mouth is watering so much. Honestly, so nice. I'm gonna regret doing this because I've got so much stuff to eat, but I'm gonna go in again. Kinda spicy at first, then the spicy goes away. And then it's just like, sour and salty, and it's just like delicious. Next, what's this? Ebi katsu. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I went, we're literally into the second thing and I already don't know what something is. Oh, it's like tempura prawn, like sort of little prawn lollipops, you know? The sauce kind of looks like ketchup, but I don't actually know what it is. It's like a red kind of sauce, you see in that? Oh, it's spicy. Again, that like amazing flavor that's like hot, but also kind of sour. If these are just the starters, we're off to a really good start. This is delicious. All right, what's next? Tama squid. Oh, it's the squid balls. Everybody relax, squid balls. With what I believe are bonito flakes, which I think are like little sort of flaky bits of fish, essentially, bottoms up. Hmm. I need to be alone with my thoughts. It's really good. It has the same squiddy flavor that the chili squid had, but I would go so far as to say that I think I prefer the tama squid because it's more substantial. I know I really, I just, I, I don't care. Delicious. Next side we have edamame. Nice. Edamame is a classic Japanese green bean that we all know and love. It's like healthy popcorn. And I hear a very good source of protein. So beautifully presented. And also it's one of those things that like, oh, I'll get a side, but I'll just get some edamame. It's like, it's the healthy one. It's the one that makes you feel good about yourself. I have nothing but time for edamame. Next up, we have got wok fried greens. Oh my God, you know, I've never had this. It looks like um, tender stem broccoli. Bok choy, I think. It's in like a sort of smoky, almost like chow mein-like sauce. Even stuff that's like the healthier, things that you might think would be more boring, are actually really nice, really flavorful, and something that can really stack up to the other things. Okay, next side we have chicken yakitori. I know what this is, and I'm very excited about it. This is chicken skewers. I think they're like honey glazed or something. Yeah. It's like teriyaki. I don't know how much of it I'm supposed to eat. It's hard to like ration myself. It's hard to control myself, I'll be honest. I'm making a dent, well, I say a dent. This is like a small scratch, a ding, if you will. Next, we have the Bang Bang Cauliflower. Ooh, it looks like it's been deep fried. Like, does that not look amazing? I've never had it. I'm assuming Bang Bang means it's like spicy. Yeah, spicy-ish. Oh, oh no, it is spicy. <laughs> oh, that one crept up on me. I don't like it as much as the wok fried greens because I think I just prefer salady leafy vegetables more than I prefer vegetables that are like little trees. Does that make any sense? Okay, we're moving on to the gyoza. 
It's a big part of the day. First, we have the Yasai Gyoza. Now, Yasai, I believe, is the Wagamama name for their like sweet potato and aubergine dishes. It also comes with a little sauce in the middle. Couldn't tell you what it is by looking at it. Here's the Gyoza in all its glory. Beautiful. Okay, we're just gonna go for it. Hmm. Okay. That is all right. It's not my favorite. It's kind of soft the whole way through. If you like those flavors, I think you'd think this was delicious, but I think I prefer different gyozas to this, personally. Next on the gyozas, we have got prawn. Ding. Okay, see, now this is more what I'm looking for when it comes to a gyoza. You know, a bit more substance to it. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like the bounciness of the prawns. You know how prawns are kind of bouncy, you know? That's much more of a fulfilling gyoza experience. That's delicious. It's so hard for me not to eat every single one. Okay, next up we have gar duck. I'm also hoping that this is gonna be a sort of like plum sauce, what's it called? Hoisin. It is. Oh, see, they just know what they're doing. I'm just gonna go ahead. Pastry slightly oily, but the flavor of the duck is amazing. It tastes exactly like, you know, when you make those duck pancakes. I'm finding it interesting that they're using different types of dough for each of the gyozas. I didn't realize that was a thing. Okay, next up we've got chicken gyozas. That by far is the best of the bunch. That's got the, the gyoza dough that you imagine when you have. Do you know the type that I mean? It's like almost like slightly wet. I don't know what word you just describe it, like flubby. Do you know what I mean? It's like flubby. Steamed on the top, kind of kind of jelly-like almost, and then like fried and crispy on the bottom. And I don't know, I'm just, every now and then I'm a man of the classics and that that is a classic gyoza. So winner, winner, chicken gyoza dinner. Boom, what's next? Ooh, okay. Here we have the vegan sticky ribs. So I think these are pieces of tofu, but made to taste like ribs. That's my understanding of the situation. If you told me that was a rib, I'd probably believe you. Oh my God. It has a barbecue flavor, but it's more spicy than that. It's not like TGI Fridays. It definitely has like its own spicy spin on it. That is so good. But this is the kind of thing I love to see. We've done loads of these videos and there's often really, really good vegan offerings and Wagamama is no different. They're doing great vegetarian and vegan stuff and I am all in for that, so well done. Okay, so now that we're a bit of the way through, I think it might be time to try a juice. Let's try this first one. It's called Power. It is a green juice of some description. Spinach, apple, and fresh ginger. Ooh, that sounds good. It's got a little bib on telling me what it is. Isn't that adorable? That's good. It is at health. And also I think because this food, like when you're eating like loads of it, it can be quite overwhelming. I think something like refreshing to drink like this is really good. So the power juice I recommend. Um, let's do the katsu salad. Oh, right, okay. So this is literally lettuce with like a katsu dressing. Okay. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> I was so gearing up for this to be like a thing that I didn't like. Salty, slightly sour. It's hard to say. It's really good. I would never order this because it's just like, when the menu is this extensive, I'm not ordering lettuce. Do you know what I mean? Next up, we've got barbecue beef buns. So I think this is gonna be like a, yeah, boom. It looks lovely. It's, what did I say, beef? Yeah. The bun is like stuck to my teeth. Hang on. Yeah, I wanted to like that more than I do. Do you know what it is? It's just that roast beef flavor that I like, just like don't vibe with. But seeing as I'm having to nitpick here out of like a thousand things, I'll say that's like not one of my favorites. Next, we have got, let's do this, miso soup. Oh my God, this is fun because I get to use my spoon. I would love to show you what it looks like, but if I turn it, it's gonna fall out. Gravity, it's not my fault. But you can see, you've got the seaweed, you've got the tofu there. It tastes the way miso is supposed to taste. To be honest, I'd be surprised if this was bad because it's like, I'm pretty sure you just make it with a paste. Miso is miso at the end of the day. Where they do get points is for the security of its delivery. Oh, more gyoza. Sorry, we weren't done with the gyoza apparently. Now we have the pulled pork gyoza. It's the flubby dough again. I'm just going with my hands, I've noticed, but whatever, we're doing it. Cheers. Mm. The pork is good. The pork is similar to the duck, I would say. Very sweet sauce. I know some people like the kind of like the pulled shredded meat, but I find it a bit drier. I don't like the texture as much. So the pork is good, but chicken's still the best gyoza, for sure. We have got, ooh, oh my God, interesting. Mushroom bun. Oh, wow. I really, like, I didn't know, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but it's literally like a bow with mushrooms in it. Look at that, you seeing that? So this must just be like a, a vegetarian or vegan version actually. I can't believe I actually prefer this to the to the beef one. Mushrooms are the meat 
of the vegetable world, given the kind of like the punch that they pack, flavor-wise. One thing I will say about bao buns is the sticky dough fully gets like stuck on your teeth, which is not making me feel very glamorous right now, but it's fine. So next up, we are going to try the orange juice. I think this might be freshly squeezed, which if, if so, it, it, yeah, it is. I can't tell you. You know what this is like? You know when you go to either like a local coffee shop or like an airport and they have one of those machines where you can see the oranges like going through it and squeezing them and stuff and it makes this kind of juice? That's breakfast included at the Marriott type juice. That's good stuff. Next up, we are gonna have the teppanyaki, which is their noodle dishes. So first up, we have got the yasai yaki udon, which is their vegetarian type. Udon is this like thick noodle. This, you see this like thick boy noodle that's going on? It's about the thickness, honestly, of like a piece of squid. It's good, you know. It's a little bit plain, I think, because I've had the yakisoba and yaki udon a bunch of times. This by itself with just the vegetables is a little bit not quite as flavorful. Because I know what the other ones with meat taste like, this one just doesn't taste as good as those, if that makes any sense. So this is the same again. This is the yasai yakisoba, but this one is with rice noodles. So it's with these like more like kind of like rice, like vermicelli type noodles. What are my thoughts about this? In my opinion, udon is better because rice noodles, they don't have the same oomph as regular noodles in the sense that they don't have any gluten in, right? Like I'm pretty sure rice noodles are gluten free. And as a result of that, they don't have the same kind of like chewiness and like doughy breadiness, which I personally really enjoy. Obviously, if you're like gluten intolerant or celiac or something like that, rice noodles are an excellent alternative. But I am not either of those things. So I will be sticking to regular noodles. Thank you very much, and next. Okay, next up we have the Yasai Yakisoba. This is the same as the other two, except rather than udon noodles, which are thick, or rice noodles, which are flat and made of rice, these are the regular soba noodles, as you can see. Again, good. Because it's veggie, the flavors are more subtle. So I've now tried soba, udon, and rice noodles. And my opinions are the following. It goes udon noodles, soba noodles, rice noodles. Now we're getting into the exciting stuff. We've got the ginger chicken teppanyaki, but this one has got little shredded bits of, I think, ginger, and then, oh, chicken, because it's ginger chicken. That makes sense, God. Funny how these things work out, isn't it? Yeah, hmm. If I had this in the restaurant, I would cover it in soy sauce and chili oil, because it's a bit dry, just the way that it is. This one feels a bit more stripped back. Maybe this is for people who prefer, like, I don't know, a more simple dish? I'm not the type. I want as many things on the plate as possible. So, ginger chicken teppanyaki? Nah, not for me, sorry. Next? Yes, okay, finally, I've been waiting for this to happen. Pad Thai. I've not had Pad Thai in ages. If you've not had Pad Thai before, so you've got prawns in it. Delicious. Chicken in it. Equally fabulous. But for me, the main thing that makes Pad Thai Pad Thai is that a squeeze of lime that you get going on, you know what I'm saying? And also like little bits of peanut that are like crushed and put all through it. Pad Thai at Wagamama is delicious. They know how to do it. I really recommend it because yeah, good, yes. Um, next up we've got the Yasai Pad Thai. I literally in my life have never had a vegetarian Pad Thai. <gasps> I personally really enjoy tofu. Tofu ahoy, cheers. I'm not sure I'd even notice it wasn't, that the meat wasn't in it because it tastes the same. It's got tofu in it, I'm happy. Next. Uh, next up, we have the yaki udon. This is defo one of the, the family favorites. Squid, essential viewing. Let me tell you. Mm. And you know when you're in Wagamama and you sit down and there's a soy sauce and then there's this like little, it's like a pepper shaker full of red stuff. And I would just put that all over this and that was like my favorite thing to do. Next up, we have got the yaki soba. So same idea, squid, prawn, but with the skinnier noodles. Still really good, tastes the same. I will say, I still rate the udon noodles over the soba noodles. That's just personal preference. Ooh, okay, this is exciting. I've never had this before and I'm looking forward to it. This is the steak soba. So this is noodles, literal steak on it. Look at that, are you kidding? At this point, I'll be honest, I know what the noodles taste like, but let's go for the steak. It's good. One thing I would like is if the steak was slightly rarer. I feel like this one's in the restaurant, the meat comes slightly rarer. I think because it's been like cooking in the bowl. Next up, we're gonna try. This juice is called Positive. So this is pineapple, lime, spinach, cucumber, and apple. I actually prefer that. Like if you're having like a pad thai or something that has lime on it, and then you have a drink that has lime in it as well, 
That's like a really nice combo, I feel like. Next up we have the tofu firecracker. So, oh my God, wow, okay. So you open this up. This is the, this is the peppery stuff I was talking about, right? Firecracker makes me think it'll be spicy, so let's find out. It's not that spicy. The overarching, oh no, it is kind of spicy actually, it's building. It's one of those, if I ate the whole thing, it would get spicier and spicier and spicier. That feels like the vibe. The overarching flavor of the firecracker rice for me is sesame, is what I'm getting. Okay, so next up we've got the Donburi things. Donburi rice bowl. I always think of Donburi like a poke bowl. This is definitely like the more kind of healthy way to go. It's like you've got some veg there, a kind of bed of rice, chicken in the middle. Oh, and some kimchi. That's fun. I love kimchi. We haven't seen kimchi yet. You know what, I'm liking the Donburi. It's like, again, it's like, because it's not like covered in sauce, it's simpler and it is a bit drier, but it is good. And if I wanted to go to Wagamama and have something that wasn't too heavy, I think I'd go for something like this. How am I feeling now? Um, I don't know, I don't feel full, but I feel tired, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm confident I can do this, because if you think about it, it's what, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20, 20. It's like 23 more mouthfuls, I can do that. He says, not sure of himself at all. Next we have the duck Donburi. See, now they're treating me. They're treating me nice today because I've got all the duck, which is fabulous. <gasps> There's a fried egg in it. Who saw this coming? Fab. And this is it, you got a straight up egg in it. This is good. This is the one. I mean, I've only had two of the Donburi balls, but this is the one. It's interesting how like the chicken version of one thing can be the best, like in the gyoza, but the duck version of another thing can be the best, i.e. the Donburi. That duck, is so flavorful in a way I can't describe. I don't know how they've done this. It's like, imagine the flavor of duck and then just like multiply it by 10 and add saltiness and chilliness to it. It's so good. Next. Beef Donburi. Have you ever had one of those like flame grilled corn burgers that are like really, really smoky tasting? That's what this beef tastes like. And I mean that in a good way. It's really, really nice. The only thing about this is it's the same layout of bowl as the chicken one, meaning it doesn't have an egg. And I think the egg is what makes this bowl the best. So it's fine, duck still wins, in my opinion. Next up, we have Shu's Shiok Chicken. It says Shu Han Lee collaboration, under 600 calories. Shu Han Lee, author of Chicken and Rice, Southeast Asian Recipes from a London Kitchen. Cool. Let's say the hopes are high. Whoa, okay, wow. I'm just gonna have to show you. It's just a very different looking bowl than what we've seen so far. Look at it. Cheers. The flavor of this chicken, it's like lemon limey, it's like fragrant, it's more like sweeter and fresher. It's less like deep fried and spicy, if that makes any sense. But yeah, that's really nice actually. You know what, that's that's a welcome change of pace. I mean, don't get me wrong, like Wagamama food is delicious, but when you've eaten all of it, it in one go, it's nice when something like completely different like breaks onto the scene, you know? Sorry, I was just thinking at the design. It has, a, it has a pretty little design on the on the box. It's just something a bit different, you know? Something to break the day up. Next up, we have the naked katsu. And this says that is grilled curry chicken on rice with a mixed salad and a side of katsu curry sauce. Oh, okay. So how am I gonna do this? Let's, I'm gonna pour it on. Oh. I'm sorry, but you know what? Anything just like slathered in katsu sauce, you've got my attention. As diet versions of foods go, this is so good. Like, look at it. Uh, next up, we have the salmon harusame salad. Oh my God, another visual feast. Look at it. I just didn't see it coming. Let's try this beautiful summer noodles. It's really good. There's a flavor in there that I've not tasted much so far, and it's mint. This is pepping me back up. It's fresh. It's like light, you know? I think this is the first salmon dish. Wow. Summer noodles again, but this time it's the tofu harusami salad. Da -da -da. Again, I must say, these ones look really beautiful. That's just nice to look at, isn't it? You know when they say it looks summery? That does look summery. Like they've got that down. Forming an opinion. Um, this is a bit too healthy for me. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It's nice to look at. It's very lush and verdant. But when it comes to the flavor and the texture, because it's all like watery vegetables, it's just a bit too healthy for me. I'd probably pick something else. Okay, first thing we've got is the chicken firecracker. Do you know what I like about this as well? How they put, they put the rice in like a mound. God, these bits of chicken are massive. They do not, they do not scrimp, do they? 
The firecracker sauce is delicious. Oh my God, and it is spicy. I'm sat here all like, ah, it's not that spicy, I'm absolutely fine. Two minutes passed, I'm like, oh. Next, we're gonna have another one of these curries. And we have got the chicken rice curry. So again, it's this big sort of like swadge of rice in the middle. Absolutely massive pieces of chicken. <laughs> chicken is slightly dry. The flavor of that curry is really, really good. It's kind of, it's like a Thai green curry, but maybe like slightly like lemonier, I guess. But definitely the vibe is Thai curry. It's got coriander, it's got lime, it's got coconut in it. Like that's the general vibe. If you like Thai green curries, you will absolutely love the chicken rice or curry for sure. Next we have the tofu rice or curry. Tofu can be hit or miss. I've noticed sometimes when tofu is like deep fried, it goes kind of wet. It just kind of depends. No, yeah. The sauce is the same as the chicken bomb. That's good, we already know that. Because it's tofu. This might just be because we've had it sitting waiting for a while, but like, it goes a bit soggy. My editorial opinion, I can't, I can't score this higher than the chicken one, purely just because the taste is the same, but the texture's not as good. That's the bottom line. We have another teppanyaki. I know we finished the teppanyakis ages ago, but I thought I'd been organized, and apparently I hadn't. We have got a salmon soba, which, ooh, look at that. The way they have so graciously and elegantly laying this fish across the noodles. It's been in the bowl for a while, so it might be slightly dry now. I don't know if salmon like this and noodles together is such a winning combination. I think I prefer like the pork or the chicken. So yeah, that's okay. We've got six katsu dishes here. We're gonna go through these lightning speeds. First katsu dish is bigatsu. Oh, you know what this is? This is seitan. So this is vegan, vegan chicken. It's actually seitan that comes with the katsu sauce. Oh, wow. Oh my God. The texture. I wouldn't say it's like chicken, but it's like, it's like thick jerky. I don't know. There's a very dense structure to it. It's good. As vegan dishes go, that one holds its own. So I'm quite impressed. Next katsu we've got is the yasai katsu. Oh, whoa. Not what I expected. It's fully. It's like massive deep fried bits of like uh, sweet potato and like aubergine. I don't know about this, man. This feels a bit rogue. Like that's, is that not just like, that's a huge bit of sweet potato, isn't it not? <laughs> that's massive. I guess all I can do is like dip this in the, in the, in the katsu and try it. Mm. Mm. That's not for me. I'm looking for more. I'm just, I'm looking for more. Okay, next up, hot yasai. What's the difference? Oh, okay. So this is the same as before, i.e. these <laughs> huge bits of vegetables, but the sauce is spicier. Let's go. Okay, I've got some thoughts about this one. I can't entertain the just huge breadcrumbed pieces of vegetables. I just, I just don't, I don't think that's, that's mad. Having said that, that sauce is the spiciest thing I've had all day and it's actually really good. Okay, so we have got, this is the Vigatsu, so it's that, it's that seitan fake chicken again, but this is with the really, really hot. The hot katsu sauce is delicious. I can say with 100% certainty that the hot Vigatsu is better than the hot Yasai. Yeah, that hot katsu sauce is really hot. Woo! We have got the hot chicken katsu. Okay, now we are talking all day. This is something I would order all day. Oh my God, <clears throat> it's so hot. Chicken regular katsu coming up. This will be an interesting thing. Will the hot chicken katsu or the chicken katsu be better? Only one way to find out. This is the chicken with the regular katsu sauce. I think for me, I actually prefer just the regular chicken katsu because it wouldn't be as painful to eat. Like my mouth is still burning. I am just gonna lay these final things out. If you could, is there any way, are you able to see the pile that is down here? It's no joke. Next up, we've got the prawn rice curry. I'm sorry that these weren't in a better order. I promise you I tried, but it's just when you've got like 60 things, it kind of becomes a little bit complicated. I don't know if prawn or chicken will be better. Prawn, 100%. This curry, for some reason, lends itself really well to seafood. I don't know why. Maybe because it's like a sort of like fresher taste, that kind of like citrusy lightness is nice to have with fish. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's happening with me? Well, I just, I'm full, you know, this is a lot. I'm just like, wow, but I can do it. Okay, prawn firecracker this is. So this is the, we've seen it before, we know what we're dealing with. It's the firecracker rice, but with prawn this time. So this can be like a sort of sesame prawn. Yeah. You know what's difficult is that I'm trying to judge things on the same level the whole way through, but I'm just, 
There's no way I can enjoy this as much as I did like the second or third thing that I tried. Do you know what I'm saying? Having said that, objectively, I can tell that if I wasn't so full, this would be really, really nice. So the prawn firecracker is really good, but you know what? The spiciness of the hot katsu was just going away and the firecracker has just reawakened it. So for that, I resent you. It's delicious, but it's giving me a hard time. I think now is the time to try the final juice. This juice is called tropical mango, apple, and orange, which just sounds lovely and simple. And I'm right. Oh, that is delicious. Oh my God. All we have left now is ramen, which let's be real, is not going to be too difficult. Ooh. Okay, so the ramen's going to be hard to show because it's soup, but that's about as much as I can tilt it, if you can see that at all. This is good now. What is this? The Pari Barosu. It's a mushroom and tofu ramen. Like how you have it in miso soup. It's like big bits of that and it's nice. It's really good. <laughs> excuse me, excuse my hiccup. <sighs> I might need to, I might need to break for a second. Just, just for a couple of minutes. <sighs> Don't laugh at me. You're doing good. Don't give up. I hope you're not giving up. I'm not giving up. I, I won't give up. No, there's no way. I have, I have not given up yet. I'm not, can you imagine now this close after I've done all of that? Next up, we've got chili steak ramen. For this, I'm gonna get a bit of the broth and a bit of the main event. Okay, cheers. The steak tastes really, really good. Also, the ramen, cause there's a lot of like chili in it. Like the, the soup itself is really spicy, but that's really, really nice. The other thing that's nice about ramen, I think, is that because everything's like submerged in liquid the whole time, nothing really dries out. I've never had a steak ramen before, and that actually is proper nice. So, well done. Okay, next up we've got shirodashi. I don't know what shirodashi is. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It feels like I am. Hard to say at first sight. We've got what looks like chicken? I don't know. Shirodashi is a Japanese seasoning made of light colored soy sauce, dashi of bonito, and mirin salt. But then what is the meat? I want to say pork. Yeah, that's pork. Okay. Oh, I see what they mean. It's like a salty, smoky flavor. It's completely different to the other ones. It also has this, like, the tea-stained egg. Mm-hmm. This is the best one so far. Yeah, shirodashi, I like it. And the pork as well. Mmm. Delicious. Next up, we have Tantan Men beef. It looks like it's got a lot more noodles. This one's got kimchi in it and egg. And the main difference is that the beef is, like, shredded. Do you see? Which, honestly, I might... I might prefer, let's see. Mm-hmm, mm. 100%. The broth itself is like super thick in comparison. Yeah, that's really nice. I prefer the tantan min beef to the steak. Next up, we have miso cod. Ooh, that sounds fun. And I like the sound of that because it sounds a bit different, you know? And what is life without whimsy? Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Yes, oh my God, wow. And they they were not lying. Despite how full I am and how tired I am, I'm actually very excited to try this. That, by far, so far, is the best ramen. Something about the cod. I don't know, I wasn't expecting to see cod on this menu. It's a pleasant surprise. It's fishy, it's miso-y. It feels kind of healthy, it's good. That's really, really good. I recommend that. Oh, I really recommend that. Okay, next up we've got chili chicken. To look at, I'll be honest, this one looks a bit meh. You know what, the flavor of the, the broth itself is really, really good. It's like, it's got like a heap of coriander in it, which is really, really nice. Broth flavor, good. In general, it's slightly bland and the chicken is a bit dry. So this chicken is definitely not one of the best ramens in my opinion. The cod beats this one out of the park, as far as I'm concerned. Here we have the final savory dish, and it is chicken ramen. Oh, something nice and simple to round us off. Um, it looks the same as the other one, doesn't it? I'd say it looks pretty similar. Oh God. Let's try the broth first. It's fine. I know what the ramen can be like. So this just, by comparison, doesn't feel as spectacular. Uh, we're nearly there. First up, we've got the white chocolate and ginger cheesecake. Now, in its defense, it's kind of melted. <laughs> when I tell you, I can smell white chocolate and ginger from here, it smells amazing. You know what's funny? I'm so full, but because it's dessert, the idea of this is like fine, I'm like, yeah. And you know what? I don't like white chocolate and that is naughty. It's like a white chocolate mousse, yes? Then it has like literal bits of like actual ginger in it. 
And it all just adds up to this, just this fabulous combination. We've made it, we're finally here. Look at it. Look at that. It's a little tart or something. Why am I holding it like this? This is the yuzu and lemon tart with raspberry compote. Let's give this a go. Oh, damn. You know, I'm not really like a dessert person. Like when I go to restaurants, I don't tend to get the desserts, but this is actually like, just like lemon tart. And just like that, I have eaten everything at Wagamama. So, I think there have been at least three or four times now that I've said that was the hardest one of these that I've ever done. But I'm pretty confident this was the hardest one I've ever done. Like, we all saw the amount of food that was on this table, yes? Yeah? Like, that was no joke. As the person who has the privilege of independently adjudicating everything on the Wagamama menu, I am happy to share with you that the best thing on the Wagamama menu is... Tama squid. Yeah, it's a starter. This is the thing. I really did not see this coming, but the second I bit into that squid ball, I was like, this is it. It's like, it's simple. It's like got that delicious like squid flavor. It's like deep fried, just like everything about it was delicious. It had the little bonito flakes on top. Just like, yeah, I am unequivocally sure in my opinion that the best thing on the Wagamama menu is the Tama squid. Changed my mind. So now what did I think? the best thing on the menu was gonna be. I'm very humbled to tell you that I thought the best thing on the menu was gonna be the yaki udon, which if you don't remember, is a noodle dish with the like really, really thick noodles. It's like what I thought was my favorite thing on the menu and still might be in terms of the mains, but tama squid was not even on my radar. I'm not even sure if I've had it before. So there you go. It just shows sometimes the only way to know what to order at a restaurant is to eat everything on the menu. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions of any other places that we should eat everything at, please leave them in the comments below. And until next time, see you later.